We interrupt your normal programming to bring you this breaking news from the IET. It's finally dropped Amendment 1 to the 18th edition of BS7671. We're super excited about this, Gary. Never known an amendment come out so quickly, and we've got it in front of us on the PC. We've uh, downloaded it. It's yep. available on uh, the IET website, so go there. Probably click the link below, I would imagine, to go and find where it is and start having a look through this yourself. In this video, we're just gonna have a look at some of the kind of key changes. We're not gonna dissect it in detail. We're just gonna give you a bit of an overview. So stay tuned to see some of the big changes that have happened inside Amendment 1. The first thing I would say is, don't panic. You've collected an 18th edition certificate in probably the last 18 months. That certification is totally valid and you are not required to go back to your local college or training provider in order to update that to the 18th edition amendment one. No. So what's going to happen is the awarding bodies for those who sit in guilds and your hours, et cetera, are going to uh, modify the questions within the special location section, covering 722. Mm -hmm. There won't be a huge amount of question changes, so you won't be penalised if you've currently got the original 18th edition. Unlike in previous amendments, when there's been a massive change, you'd go back and you'd have to reset. Yep. 17th edition amendment three was a biggie, wasn't it? Okay, and you have to go back and do that. And that's really good news for everyone who passed their 18th edition last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... What we'd suggest you do is obviously download the document, yep. insert it into your uh, currently blue edition of the 18th edition Warren Regulations and do a little bit of personal CPD. Yep. However, from the quick reading that we've had, and we haven't had many minutes to read this, <laughs> so we're uh, flying it out as quickly as we can, is that a lot of it, Joe, hasn't it been taken up by um, advances in technology? Yeah, absolutely. The, the kind of major changes that you see in here are to allow for the fact that manufacturers have developed some really clever new technology that provide some extra protection for yeah. EV charging points and the associated dangers of taking electricity outside. Obviously, we know there's increased risks there. So those are where the major changes come from. But yeah. there's, there's one note in here that I think we need to talk about in a little bit more depth, and we'll, we'll mention that later in the little, video. Yeah, a little bit of a, mm. yeah, that's going to get some debate yeah. online, I would just suggest. A, just a nice point as well, because obviously, uh, you know, you've got your, your blue regs book. Now, there will be completists out there who <laughs> desperately want the new colour. I'm among them. Yeah, I like to have a, like to have a full set. Uh, however, if you're balking at the cost of buying a new regs book, as Gary said earlier, you don't need to do that. It is a free download, yeah. so you can just download it, print it, stick it in the back of your book, stick it in 722 probably is where you want it, yeah. and then it's ready to go. So, so let's think about some of those technological changes, the yep. ones that the electrician loves, where they can continue to fit an EV charging point and not realise what's gone on inside it that yep. makes it safer. We're obviously talking about TNCS earthing arrangements. We're talking yep. about the, the protection against the broken pen conductor, which is always the issues. You lose the neutral, you lose the protective earth within the installation. Yep. You're standing outside touching frequent metalwork of a, a vehicle being charged from electricity. Yep. Ooh, that was all the, the, the big risks, yes, the big risks. absolutely. So they've now said that um, you can monitor voltage change between, is it the line and neutral conductor with a 10% fall either way? Yes, absolutely. So that is in regulation, let's get this right, 722.411.4.1. Just rolls off the tongue really nice and easy. And you it? remembered yeah. it off the top of your head as well, which <laughs> yeah, was nice. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> uh, and uh, some of this hasn't changed. So uh, indent one doesn't appear to have changed and indent two doesn't appear to have changed. There are tweaks to indent three. Now, there was a point, I think, in the draft uh, that was released, the public yeah. draft, I think they were going to remove indent three completely. Yeah, I think they were. It's still in there, yes. which is good, because it does offer some, some specific help. It's been tweaked. Uh, it, say, it used to say the device shall not operate if the voltage exceeds 70 volts uh, for less than a given time period. So let's have a look at that. Yeah, it does not exceed 70 volts RMS. Yep. And in the new reg, it says need not operate. Okay. So before that was almost like a restriction. Well, it mustn't operate, but now it's saying it need not operate, which is a very different okay. uh, take on that. Uh, we also used to read, uh, or rather, I think there's been a uh, yes, sorry, appendix uh, indent three here. Sorry, I'm getting I apologise. You've had it all for fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so appendix three. Whew, here we're getting it. Um, it said, closing or resetting a device shall be my manual means only. Okay, yep. Now, uh, it, that's been changed as well to closing or resetting the device shall be possible only if the voltage between the circuit protective conductor and earth does not exceed 70 volts RMS. So in other words, the fault has to be cleared yep. before the device can reset. Makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And when we say CPC and earth, I know because people throw that earth in at the CPC, so yeah. the circuit protective conductor within the circuit, earth being the greater mass. Yes, yes as it always is in the one regulations. Of, one of my favourite things to point out, if you go to the definitions and you look at the word earth, it says the conductive mass of the earth, earth. with a capital E, which is the planet we live on, rather okay. than the main earthing conductor 
bonding conductor or CPT. So we're talking about ten uh, percent. So we're talking at two fifty three, and is it two oh seven going the other way with my quick maths there? Is it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ten either way. So it's going to monitor that voltage, yep. and if it sees it, it stray beyond those parameters, it goes beyond yep. the 253 or below 207, yep. the device will operate. Yes, and that is what's covered by the new indent, yep. indent 4. Okay. So indent 4 speaks about uh, uh, between being greater than 253 volts or less than 207 volts RMS. So, Did yeah, I say so, 207, did I? Uh, yeah, I think you nailed it. Well done. Okay. So... <laughs> That, yeah, that's technology. Technology's yeah. done that. They've got, they've obviously got technology that can monitor those voltages. It yeah. sees those patterns. It, it suggests that those voltage ranges are, are breached. Yeah. It's a possibility of a broken pen, mm -hmm. or it is a broken pen. Yeah. Device will operate and, and come out of circuit. Yeah, absolutely. That's fine. Okay, technology caught up with that. Um, we've looked at previously the um, tear down of a number of EV chargers on the channel, yeah. haven't we? And I just recommend you check those out. We've tore down a Rolex one, and yeah. we've tore down one by Zappi, the Zappi 2 EV charging point, and that's got a lot of additional technology mm. in it to make it allegedly, and this is not a sales pitch, allegedly from, I'm sure from their point of view, safer and safer and saferer. Okay, <laughs> so that's the three people that are in the safe family. Yep. Okay, and is that a new indent or is it within an indent or do we think it's hidden in there somewhere, Joe? So we're talking about the uh, My Energy device. Yes, the, the yeah, device, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's covered partly by indent three. As it always was. As it always was, so it's, it's kind of, there was concern that that would be removed. Uh, so that's covered by indent three, but there's this interesting indent five now, yeah. uh, which actually speaks about alternative devices. And it, basically it says, uh, protection against electric shock is provided by the use of an alternative device to those in three or four, which does not result in a lesser degree of safety than using three or four. Okay. Equivalent means of functionality could be included within the charging equipment. So it's kind of, it's just allowing for that emergence of new technology yes. that achieves the same level of safety via different methods. Okay. It's, it's, it's how I see that. That's how I read that. And, and, and that's covering them because technology changed so rapidly quick yeah. before the, uh, after the 18th edition drop that we've got this amendment so quickly, they've yeah. given themselves a little bit of wiggle room in there. Yeah, absolutely. Shall yeah. we get a little controversial? Oh, well, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of... Uh, oh, he's, he's teasing it. He's teasing it. <laughs> <laughs> there's some, some additions. Uh, there's an extra note five here as well, which is, uh, which is an interesting more. It talks about... Um, uh, sort of equipment that's not covered by British or, or harmonised standards. Yep. So that'd be interesting. That's just basically saying again, you know, if you get something in from, I don't know, the far side of the world that doesn't have a British standard stamp on it, yep. you've got to make sure that that equipment meets, you yep. know, the, the relevant standards anyway yeah, to keep, keep uh, been the installation safe. Rules, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we come to note six. Now, note six is an interesting one, and expect a lot of debate about this, I suspect, uh, especially on social media coming up. We're not going to start that debate. <laughs> Just to explain what it says, it says, creating a TT earthing system for charging equipment or the whole installation as an alternative to using a PME earthing facility with one of the methods one to five above may not be an appropriate solution. May not <laughs> be an appropriate solution due to the inability to provide sufficient separation from buried metal work connected to the supply PEN conductor. Mm. Now, this is interesting because up until now, the earth electrode has always kind of been the, the, the fallback yeah, point, hasn't it? It's always it. been, well, if you're not sure, stick an earth electrode in. But what this note seems to be saying, and it's, it's curious that this is a note, it almost seems like a very small point here, but it's, I think this might be a game changer for the industry. It's suggesting that there might be issues if you stick your earth rod into the ground, perhaps near a piece of earthed metallic uh, structural part of the building. Okay. Or maybe uh, a metallic gas pipe that yes. has been bonded. Yes. Or maybe a metallic water pipe that has been bonded. <laughs> yes. That you might end up not almost basically having your earth electrode effectively connected to the main earthing system of the building, which is what we were trying to avoid in the first place. Same potential. Yeah. Leave it. <laughs> please debate uh, elsewhere on social media. That's the talking yeah. point, isn't we've, we've it? Sat we've and yeah. spoke about this off camera, haven't we? We're, we're sort of going. <laughs> so if we we sort of figured it out and gone, is that right? Have we understood that right? So we're going to seek counsel from cleverer people than us. 
And how do we do that? So you come down to an eFix live feed. Uh, the NIC local area engineers attend those events. We're going all up and down the country. It's on the website at eFix.co.uk. Come along to one of those events where we've got people that provide the EV charging points there. So you can go along and chat to the directly to the manufacturers, talk about their solutions. But then we can obviously encourage the NIC on Amendment 1 to discuss for us, the electricians, <coughs> excuse me, what the actual implication mm. is of the earth electrode. Yeah, okay. absolutely. You, that was an emotion in there, by the way. I mean, I, I wasn't welling up at the, <laughs> Goodbye, the, the earth electrode. <laughs> Goodbye, earth electrode. You've been a friend yeah. for so long. <laughs> I was going to say, mate, you've, you've gone very red there, is it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's emotion. Okay. All right. Well, all that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for lots more robust debate, I think they say, don't they? Absolutely. On this subject. So thanks for watching.